Welcome to Miller and Drixie's pod, baby. We are back. It is episode 13. Oh, God. Is that right? I think so. Lucky number 13. Yep. Gobble, gobble, baby. Thanksgiving is upon us. It actually is. We're shooting this on a Wednesday. So Thanksgiving is tomorrow. But in the spirit of Thanksgiving, look what I got. I fucking see what you have. Gobble, gobble, baby. So, so we're gonna wear this for the entire podcast. Oh my god! Put put it on. Okay. Wow, this is something. Wow, it's even got a, like a hair. Take net. your hat off. It's even got a hairnet. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Can you still hear? No. Kind of. Yeah, I think enough. Oh wow! Look at this us, is, huh? Uh, is my hair tucked in here? This is this is what we should have. We should have made something. The boys wear something like this when they lost. Actually, it would have been a better. Better hat oh, for probably. you guys, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was you. What was me? You lost, so you had to wear the tutus. Oh yeah. So now it's the turkey hats. Now it's got to be something else. Yeah. I think that'd be more comfortable as wearing this damn turkey hat. Less. If we were two turkeys in the wild, right? Let's just imagine here for a second. Okay, me and you are two turkeys. <laughs> Can you do a that, turkey call for us? Absolutely well? not. You can't do it. Try it. No. You got to try it. <laughs> <laughs> The grabbing of the giz, or what we thought. I found out that that is actually called the waddle. Oh, the waddle. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was going for. But I always used to call it gizzard, and then I ate a gizzard, and they're like, "No, that's not actually what it is." No, so it's a waddle. It's a waddle. Look at my waddle. <laughs> I bet. Okay, if we were turkeys on the wild, my waddle would be bigger than yours. Yeah, maybe. Let's just start there. Okay. But okay, let's just imagine for a second. Okay, we're turkeys on the wild again. We we oh. haven't left. We're still oh. in this imaginary <laughs> state. Okay, we're still we're out there, <laughs> yeah. right? Of uh, walking like this, and I look over and I see you. <laughs> <laughs> what What would your first impression of me be if I was a turkey in your domain? What would you think? Uh, you don't belong. I don't belong. <laughs> Go back where you came from, turkey. <laughs> I'm the I'm the King Tom. You're the King Tom. Yeah. And then I swoop in and go. Oh, that's a little turkey. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I bet I could take all his hands. <laughs> just come strutting, strutting like this. We would be best friends if we were turkeys in the wild. Probably. It would just naturally happen. All of a sudden we'd be hand in, or feather and feather, yeah. right? Strutting through the forest and then bam, hunter gets us. Yeah. But they get me first because I'd have a bigger beard. Oh, okay. You're a bigger trophy. I like going down those little imaginary lines with you. Sweet. I'm going to go glasses on. Oh, glasses on. Wow, is it sunny in here, Jake? <laughs> You're just a shiny. You're, You're way, a bright, I'm bright. My star. future's too bright. <laughs> Got to put the shades on, baby. <laughs> uh, so what you been up to, man? I feel like it's been, how long has it been? It's been like a month. I think so. We haven't been in this podcast maybe more than a month, but things have been crazy up in her. Well, you know, I, I got a new house. And you well, did play a lot of golf. Yeah. I think you helped me get a new house. Yep. Low plug for you. Yeah. Thanks, Did a great buddy. job hunting that thing down. Um, I will say that we do appreciate your gift that you gave us. Oh, the cleaning stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but let me tell you something. Oh, you <laughs> the cleaning bottle. Yeah, it's got a crack in it. What? Yeah. You drop it? No. I just, I had it underneath my sink, and I'm going. Let me tell you the story because it it, it has some merit in in this the stress and kind of the fiasco oh, okay. I've been in the last few days. Not really a stressful thing, but like a uh, mystery, right? We have mysterious moisture underneath the sink. Oh, no. So I'm sitting there and I'm feeling all the tubes and I'm feeling like a real plumber, right? I got my crack out ready to rock, okay? Can't figure out where it came from. So we took everything out from underneath the sink, okay? Still can't figure out where the, where the moisture came from. So what? then I'm running both sinks with the uh, garbage disposal on. Just, just true, true crime investigation going on. Right. No water coming out. And I'm like, well, let's run the dishwasher. Run the dishwasher. Like maybe it's coming out of there. Nothing's coming out. And then I look over and I'd put the the bottle that you gave us, which is awesome. I love the that thing that's reusable. You can get mm-hmm. like on a club thing. Mm-hmm. Awesome idea. But whoever made the bottle, the manufacturer needs to be called out on this. But there must have been a little crack because I look over and there's moisture on the floor now. 
Oh, perfect. And I go, well, what's going on? So I take the little rubber thing off the bottom. I'm looking at it. I'm shaking it. And I'm like, well, this thing's not leaking. And then we put it back on the counter. And it is leaking. From the bottom or from the top? From the bottom. It's like a micro crack. Can you see it? No. That's why the mystery was like, what's happening here? There's a ghost taking pisses. Obviously, like, I didn't taking check a piss it. everywhere. I didn't give her a pressure check. You know, I think it was fine when you gave it because the basket wasn't wet. Yeah. That's right? Weird. Well, we didn't put anything in it, I don't think. Nothing was in it either. That would make more sense. Crazy. Sorry. No, it reminded me of you. Oh. That little bit of stressful investigation, I was like, Take, I'll never get rid of this guy out of the back of my head. He's just always there. <laughs> throwing these little ninja things in my brain. And then you couldn't brain. find the freaking water? No. And then but I smelt it, and then it smelt like soap. So I was like, okay, this All is good. the cleaning supply. At least it was clean. Am I fucking boring you? You're looking at your watch? You're looking at texts? No. What's wrong? I, what you got, a, I got an email. It was, oh. a, it was an important one. Uh, Golf peril biz email. Golf apparel biz email. So tell me a little bit about that. You started this golf apparel biz. Yeah, just. Uh, and, and just I, so you know, the topic, of, the topic of discussion today, yeah. we're only going to say positive things. Yeah. So th- like for that, for that thing that just happened, I just told you, yeah. I'm thankful for that. Oh, good. Because it reminded me of you. Oh, good. So, uh, yeah, started a little a golf apparel company. I don't know if I'm going to go live with the name yet because I don't have my designs back for the initial start of the project. Yeah. Um, but I've sent them out to a test market, like friends and golf people. And I, uh, the reception is good. That's good. Otherwise I would have never, you know, sent them out for design. Yeah. Um, you know, and then, so I get this email that I just got, I sent it to a pretty renowned local artist mm-hmm. only to find out that he has already teamed up with another Minnesota based golf apparel, That's which fine. is fine. It's totally so is it, cool. Is, it's just, art, is it an artist just drawing your stuff? No. So I already drew like the designs I want for the t-shirts. Okay. You know, so that's kind of like where I wanted to start is some comedic golf only people, you know, those designs. Funny. Are, yes. Who told you that? Uh, I don't know. Friends of mine. <laughs> <laughs> My so friends say I'm funny. Those, uh, they have my hats those, in the shot. Those designs, you know, I drew, I'm having them redrew, redrawn for. Probably a good idea. Gra- so we can get them on a, gra- on a graphic tee. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So I reached out to the artist because I wanted some of his iconic shit oh. for polos to do a couple polos, which mm-hmm. I'm not like ready to transition into polos, quarter zips, hoodies yet yeah. because I just, I want to get the. I want to get the brand started with the t-shirts because yeah. nobody has my designs. They're funny as shit. And that's how I'm going to get the brand started. That's awesome. So, so you just need somebody to transport it into a digital thing. Well, I'll probably redraw it. So it looks redraw it too. M- better. Why don't I, we look at, why don't we call Veronica? See, she can draw it. She could. I had a logo done by a Fiverr guy who had done stuff for Travis Matthew. Yeah. I'm like, Mediocre on it. I don't love it. I think I mo- bought it, but the, here's the inside scoop though. I feel like most, so Veronica's a tattoo artist at, mm-hmm. at Time Bomb and Blaine. I, and then she did the logo. I don't know if she's still there. I'd have to check on this, but I feel like most tattoo artists are going to have the ability, any type of, I mean, they have to be able to draw on paper. They're draw, they can draw yeah. on skin. No, they have you to. Know? They draw first and then. So I wonder if that is a, where yeah, you I can go. Talk to her. I've got, uh, a good friend of mine who owns the CA gear in Rosemount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of his graphic designers is going to work on a few of the 10 that I sent him Yeah, to see if our visions align and, you know, make sure it works. Well, that'd be so, sweet, man. Uh, so after that, I uh, talked to a couple other people that I have connections to to, to redraw some so of So would stuff. you say that you're you're thankful? I'm always thankful. For this. You are? Yeah. What are you, what are you most thankful for this year? Let's go into this. And I'm excited about your apparel business, but it was getting kind of... Off the rails there for a second. So yep. let's uh, let's go to what you're thankful for for the year. With golf? With golf. What are you uh, most thankful for in golf this year that you got to do? That I got to do? Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, boy, a lot. I mean, the podcast, for sure. Yeah. Um, I got to shoot in the 60s more than the 80s. You did? Yeah, that's pretty fun. That is sweet. Um, and I got back together with my putter. You guys broke up for a little while. And you're yeah. back together. Yeah. 
I hit her. How was the makeup sex? Uh, it was really good. Was it? Oh, it was really good. Mm. So it's always the best. It was good. I just, I mean, I had to cheat on her a little bit. And yeah, it was bad. Uh, it was a bad stretch. And a little infidelity with the putter. Yeah, putter infidelity. That should have been the name of your brand. But but then when we got <laughs> putter back, infidelity, but th- we got back. <laughs> that sounds get- like a rock and roll <laughs> band, doesn't it? <laughs> but, <laughs> putter infidelity. <laughs> but we got to back. We got back together, and it was it's the best it's ever been. So that's great. Just made you stronger. Yeah, just made you stronger. Yeah. That's so sweet. Uh, thankful for, you got to go on that trip. Was that this year or last year? Which one? The one in Ireland. That was last year. It was last that year. Was October. You're thankful that the golf trip went well? Second year went well, yeah. Yeah. And it had a great group of guys. Well, I counted it as the first year because I was there. Yeah. So with that golf trip, we I'm thankful that I'm going to have a little bit more uh, time to be prepared this year. And yeah. Be more organized again, yet again from last year. And I thought you were last pretty year, organized last year. And if you can be any more, if you can be more organized, yeah, I'd be uh, very surprised because it was pretty well put together. Oh, it's going to be organized. It's it's just more of like a, a the planning and prepayment. It's not that it'll be more organized; it'll be less stress. Less stress, yes. Oh, because you have more time. There we go. See, less stress, and I'll be thankful for that. I'm so happy for you. I'm thankful that we locked down. The pricing for Giants Ridge and, you know. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Good. Sounds like we're going to go to the wilderness too. For a round. We're no only going to go up there once. It's a 50 minute drive. I'm not really. It's still 50 minutes north of that. I guess. I thought it was less than that, but wow. someone said it's a 50 minute drive. And I'm like, mm. well, we're not doing it two days or two rounds on Saturday. That's just too much. Yeah. Cause then you have to drive back after that. Yeah. No. Well, that's yeah. awesome, man. I'm so happy for you, and I'm glad you had a great year. Um, I'm thankful my back doesn't hurt right now. Oh, yeah. But I haven't swung a club in how long. So we'll see. Yeah. I'm thankful for I made it through the entire golf season uh, sober. Oh, that's Thankful good. for my sobriety. Little, little golf clap? Yes, 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 yes. I did it. Fuck the haters. Yeah. Um, we can talk. We we can talk about. Uh, I'm not done with my thankful list, oh, and then we can talk oh, about whatever oh, fuck you want to talk about. Oh, oh, oh. I let you have your moment. Let me yeah, have mine. Okay. Um, I'm thankful that I got to meet a new cart buddy. Cart buddy. Yeah, she likes to ride in the cart and oh, yeah. read her book. Nice. While I play 18 holes of what she considers boring golf, but pretty pretty much everybody else is like like in awe how far I hit the ball. She she could care less. Right. So I'm thankful for that. Um, yeah, I'm thankful for my new house. Thanks to you, Jake. Got yeah. a new house, dude. New place. Raise the boys. That's right. I got the fence started oh, that's at good. the new place, but they haven't finished it yet. It'll Cold. be nice to let the dog out. You know, Who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? Who? Who? But we're like, who let the turkeys out? Who let the... Burp, 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 oh, God. Remix. Hit it, Jake. That is not going on a t-shirt. What? Who let the turkeys out? Yeah. That could be a great bowling t-shirt. <laughs> hmm? Oh, my God. Who let the turkeys out? Great bowling t-shirt. Keep it in the uh, spank bank. Um, yeah. Okay, let's talk about you. I don't think there's much more to be thankful of. I didn't I didn't play the best golf this year because of my back, and so I'm not super. No, so I let's, bring that up. let's uh, transition that into, well, how are you going to play your best golf next year? I need to lose weight. Okay. So that's I need one to thing. lose weight, Jakey. So uh, one thing we had a brief conversation coming over here this morning when we talked about when we we're going to meet, uh, we talked about all the facilities that are popping up all over the metro. Yeah. To make yourself a better golfer, right? Are you going to be going to the club? Going to get lessons? You know, that's work it. on your swing. I don't know if I need any more lessons. <clears throat> I think I need to take what I have and work on them more. You need to get actually it on video. grind. I got stuff on video. Well, you need to keep doing. Yeah, video. I know. Make changes. Get it. On I need video. to grind. Need to lose weight. But the facilities that are opening when you can, you know. It's crazy how many places are popping open that you can do simulator stuff in. Now, for me, I have simulators at the club. I have there's three trackmen there and, and a bulk golf, so I'm, yeah. I'm good there. But I I do like that these places are. We there was a one place you were telling me that it's kind of like a snap fitness, but for golf, it's like open to the public. Well, you get a key. Going, or? It's going to be okay. Where, uh, where's that? That's uh, 24 golf that's being built out right now in Egan. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'll be a 24 hour access membership situation and they're going to have a 
make sure I have all my facts right here. A 22 by 40, 900 square foot putting chipping green oh, in cool. the facility. So that'll be kind of cool. That's pretty sweet. With uh, putt view, it's called. Got it. Um, I've been sharing their links and stuff, and maybe I'll start sharing them on the podcast so our listeners can see uh, what that's all about. And, yeah. You know, um, is the you putt want, view the green that yeah. like has like laser well, it has like it, it'll have a um projector on yeah, yeah. the green so it shows you the line and you can play games and how learn. much of one of those run maybe we should go i have on one. no idea i have no idea but they're, so the they're gonna have me do some stuff with the putting and course management stuff um and we'll get into it i think we're gonna have sam and peter on at some point and okay we're gonna talk about that a little bit but for the new year 2023 yeah. is going to be a banger, dude. It's going to be fun. Because everything's all set up, ready to go. We've had a nice little following here. We've met some people. We've gone out and super thankful for all, well, thankful for our fans. Yeah. You know, they are they are proud and few, but we are looking to expand that in yeah. the year 2023. Uh, obviously, having a more regulated uh, podcast. We are looking to move out of this studio and get our you know own studio and also be able to do remote stuff, uh, which would be very beneficial to be able to do that. So we can put out more stuff. Yeah. Put on more stuff more frequently, be more on because it's just so hard to both of us get their time together and, and yep. try to meet, especially during golf season. Winter is a little bit different winter. It's like, yeah, yeah, we can do this every week. Not a big yeah. deal. Uh, but I think during the golf season, we're so busy jam packed trying to network and get out there and get Miller and Drixie's name out there and do stuff and do content it, it's just tough to to get in the studio and actually talk about it but i will i will say we did record um and we had a, a very nice camera lady she's actually sitting in the corner being all quiet but she <laughs> sat there at this tournament recorded us and then jake didn't do the editing on it because he's just i don't even know well why put it I, there was why put it out we'll put it out after this podcast because we're going to talk a little bit about that tournament and in you know the next segment or can whatever. you remember it Oh, of course I can. Yeah, we shit the bed on the last hole. Yeah. So. I don't uh, want to talk about it. Though. I do. I'd rather just let I the footage go. I do, because there's a lot of rounds at the end of the season that I, I do want to elaborate and talk about. Mm. So that was one of them. We started out and we Makes were hot. so sad. And I said, okay, we have three holes to go. We got to birdie the next two or three. We birdied one, and then we parred the next two, and that cost us big time. It did. Big time. Yeah. So. It makes me so. I don't want to talk about it. One was, so a, one was a par three. It was actually pretty tough because it was super windy at that point in the day. The whole day. It was cold as fuck. It was cold and windy. And we got Dude, to, it. was terrible. We got it to 10 under. Was it 10 under? No, 9 under. Not, we were 9. Were we 9? I think so. Yeah, because we had we tied that last hole, we would have won with the scorecard. You know, we birdied the first and the second. You know, it would help handicap. us remember what happened if, the if there was, was some sort of video <laughs> out there, like a compilation I, of videos. I maybe? remember everything, buddy. Oh, you do? Yeah, like a steel vault. Kinda. Okay. Yeah, and well, so you tell I, me what happened. So I bet none of it was your fault in this story you're about to tell. No, we just we had a, I had a really good drive on the last hole. We were in a perfect position to make birdie and we just both didn't hit good shots. Right. But it's nobody to blame. Mm -hmm. So what do you want? What do you want to say? And he lipped out the putt. Yeah, it did lip out the putt. Mm -hmm. It's too bad. It was sad because I really didn't want those guys to win. Nope. They're good players. They are. They're good players. They're good ham and eggers. Yeah, for sure. We're like... We're like ham and bacon sometimes. Yeah. You know, they're it's made, the same thing. It's the same thing, yeah. but just cooked differently. Yeah. It just doesn't, you know, give you that variety that you need. Yeah. So. But, I mean. We just got to play more and more together. To play, to finish second in a tournament like that, it was full. It was full. Yeah. You got to beat a lot of teams, right? Which surprisingly, it was, I can't believe how full it was for how fucking cold it was that day. Well, you should have seen the, it was one, freezing. At, the one at Highland was more full. Really? They had more teams. Well, they could because they but put, that was warmer. They put four people, four people, which four person teams. They put two on each hole playing together, because you what? can't put a foursome out and let them just play their ball without someone verifying. Oh, so it was it was. Well, this was a scramble though. Could you imagine if it was best? <laughs> fucking, right, that'd be a nightmare. It was. Uh, that was one how of my. Fa how fast did it go? It took a while. 
Five hours. Oh, well, yeah, but not. Not terrible. Yeah. It's not terrible. I mean. Five hours, you spend that at a normal. Yeah. Scramble. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, when you show up, you pull up in the parking lot, you're like, I'm going to be here for five hours. I mean. Maybe sit. I always tell myself in my head, and I tell the people that I'm going to, like, see during the day, I'm going to be gone for six plus hours. Yeah. Because it's just, you never know what you're going to run into. With scrambles especially, yeah. That's the one thing that, like for, like for you, they sent you out a group list, right? And it's kind of organized and everybody knows how to play. But you do like a fundraising scramble. They don't have any All idea. bets are off. You have no idea who's going to be in that thing. Yeah. You know? Well, that and that's the thing with the TCG scramble. When you have two foursomes on a hole playing together, it goes pretty quick because everybody's fairly decent. Yeah. Or should be if you're going to They can hit it forward, that. yeah. So there's a lot of birdies made and like you just move on, you know, right. like putts hold, move on. There's yeah. no pars. There's no bogey. There's very minimal bogey. There's no bogeys because it's yeah. bogey's the worst you can get, you know. Right. You don't miss your, make your par, you made a bogey, you know. Yeah. Um, no, it was it was in, insane. You know, I got some huge heat, a couple of things. Prior to the tournament, my team that I, I had put together to play in it mm-hmm. had confused the days. And kind of backed out on me, right? Yeah. So you had already made plans because I had promised Kane to, he could get, bring a team to come play. Yeah. And if, if I get to play with Kane very little throughout the season Yep. because he lives in Wisconsin now. So he was going to put together a little dream team for us. Yeah. Me, Kane, uh, one of his buddies, Joel B. Johnson, he played in the um, senior U.S. Open this year. Yeah, cool. So it's like... Okay, I'm yeah. gonna, you guys I guess play? you can come. Yeah, sure, let's mm-hmm. do it. And then one other buddy of theirs, they confused the day like that week. They were like, "We can't play," and I already paid, mm. so I asked you. You couldn't do it, so I was like, "Okay, well, I'll ask the Golf Minnesota group who can play." I'm not getting out of bed unless I can win, right? Right? Because what's the point? Uh, if you're gonna waste, I mean, by the time I got home, it it was seven hours, right? Right? Yeah. So if I'm gonna waste seven hours, I want to. A shot at winning this thousand yeah, box. Yeah, go right? at it. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Reese Jacobson, because I reached out to the Southern Hills twelve man team, yep. also, and just said, "Anybody want to play?" And Reese immediately, "Yep, I mean, yep. he plays at Highland now." Right. We're like, all right, Reese is good enough. He hits the ball far enough. Like, cool. Yeah, you're in. He puts good. And then we got a response from this guy who, Mark, something, whatever his last name is. He said he was in, and then this kid from South Dakota was like, hey, I'm going to be in the cities. I want to play. I'm like, I won. I'm like, cool. Sweet. Sure. Well, we get there, and Reese is there. This dude from South Dakota is there, and this Mark dude just doesn't show up, right? Oh, no. Doesn't show up. 15 minutes before, I'm like, met, I'm messaging him, sending him, tried calling him on Facebook because I don't have his re- actual number Yeah. because I've never met him before. And I'm like, hey, dude, like, what's the deal? I'm here. We're all here. Like, we're waiting for you. Nothing. Crickets, right? So I go in and talk to Kevin. I'm like, hey, I don't know this guy. Like, obviously, I paid for him. What do, what do we do? He's like, all right, well, just take the fourth shot. Yeah. You know, someone take the fourth shot. Right. Now, so it wouldn't have probably been a huge deal that we did that. However, Reese and I, we fucking torched the field. Yeah. Okay. Like I've never had a putting day like that in my life. So I made 12 birdie Eagle putts, you know, combined wow. like just draining them. Uh, it was gross. Wow. So we shot 19 under in a four man scramble with three guys, no mulligans, no nothing. I've never done that. We eagled every par five. So all four wow. par fives we eagled. I, th- I did <clears throat> see, I did see the comment that came up from uh, T.O. <laughs> from who? T.O. Who's that? Trevor. Oh, shit. oh that guy. Trevor O'Shaughnessy. I don't know him. I know him. You do? Yeah. He's a, he's a hothead. Like, Love him to death, but he's very competitive. Like big dog. Like yeah. you, you don't understand. We played with another foursome. Yeah. And let me, let's just back this whole thing up. And about, so you guys cycled through who took the fourth shot? Or oh, how did for, you do for, it? For, depends on what the shot was. Yeah. If we even fucking needed it. Right. It's not like on. It's not like all the putts went to the fourth fucking shot. That's the thing I is you I always if you have four players, there's always going to be a D player that just isn't there at all. Like I've never played in a four somewhere all four are just like humming it. 
Right. It's either two. It's two guys that yeah. are killing everything. The other two are doing an occasional mm, dink and dunk here every now and then. But usually, when you're in a foursome, if you're playing, none of you are playing all lights out. Yeah. And some guys can say that when they come in, they shoot like an outrageous <clears throat> number with a foursome. And I, I've, I've went down this road before in scrambles, and it creates a resentment. I don't like talking about because I just get irritated. Yeah, we're all just playing amazing. It's like it's statistically unrealistic to say all four of you are playing out of your minds today. There's right. two of you that held the team together. The rest of you made maybe a putt or two. Yeah. That's how it goes. So if you're playing a three person between a three people or four people, why does that give you some sort of advantage? Yeah. It doesn't. You don't have another leg to hold you down. You know? So I don't understand it. Like I I don't I can only count a handful of times where I hit a second shot where we actually used it. You know, mm -hmm. like I think there was a, a five wood I hit on a par five um, where it netted us an eagle. Okay. Okay. Uh, a par three, I hit a second shot and it put us to easy tap in or like five foot birdie range, which right. you know, in a four man, you're not going to miss. And right. I didn't even get to the fourth player on that. No. Um, but other than that, I mean, we weren't taking a fourth drive when we have, when Reese would just pump one, you know, he's long like you. Yeah. And he would just hit one perfect. Right. I'm like, well, why would we hit a fourth shot? That doesn't right. make any sense. Yeah. You know, and we'd take that fourth shot depending on who was comfortable with the shot we were taking. Like, even when we were, like, really tight, we were like, well, let's try to try to hole it. Like, right. someone pick. Like, who hit a good shot, hit another one. Yeah. You know, it, was, so it, wasn't, like, it wasn't like we were, like, counting on that fourth shot. A lot. I think I yeah. made, like, one or two putts on the fourth putt. Which yeah. is obviously, well, it's, un you, it's unfair. Well, here's the like, thing. What are you supposed to do? Not go and play the your tournament? best? Or the tournament? Yeah. Like we didn't, the guy like got sick or died or whatever. You don't like, go in the tournament think, thinking, oh, I, I, we should, we should. It's not your fault that you won. Why is it your fault that you won? Well, that he, that Trevor dude was like, he was like, it's an advantage. I'm like, dude, it's not. But was he even in the top 10? They, he didn't even play. Oh. He had buddies there or something that uh. were like butt hurt, and I'm like, bro, I'm a fucking well. Probably if I would put my scores in at the yeah. end of the year, like I'd probably be a plus. Yeah. Okay. Which it's it's dependent on what tees I play and what courses I play and yeah. stuff. If I played from the tips on every fucking course I played, I wouldn't be. Yeah. But it's just conducive to what I actually play. I just I want it to be known <clears throat> before we before we continue on. Yeah. That. I know Trevor. I, I love love the guy to death, and he's a very competitive person. Uh, but just know that nobody's off limits if you comment on our shit. What? Because we have a podcast. Yeah. So even if we love you, <laughs> yeah. like I love him to death, but if you're gonna comment something, you're gonna be put on blast here on the pod. Well, <laughs> I, he's never played golf with me. He doesn't know me, no. and like no. I came into playing like literally the best golf of my life the last. 18 months. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I can, I can concur with that. I'm like, I just, it pissed me off some wedge shots that you hit against us. I'm just like, who the fuck is this guy? I mean, you always be good at your wedges, but you were hitting some wedge shots against Mitch and I, that I was just like, I don't even know who this guy is anymore. Oh, I can flight the ball however I want now. Yeah. I just have a whole different aspect of, cause what I used to do is, okay, I'm 100 and in, I'm always going to hit my 60. Ah. Well, no, 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 no. Now I fly to 56, fly to mm. 50, 50 or 54, 50. Like I'll do whatever the shot requires. It's yeah. just my game has just evolved so much in the last 18 months that, yes, my wedge game obviously has gotten better. But what do you, Why do you think it has evolved or do you <clears> think <throat> it's just one of those ebbs and flows of golf that you're just on a high right now? No, I. Do you have something that can consistently. No, I've I've learned how to hit those shots. I've yeah. watched bazillion YouTube videos and self-taught myself that I don't always have to hit a lob wedge inside of a hundred yards. I need to learn how to hit these shots that are required for each hole or like each green or each whatever pin you, position. YouTube is the greatest thing ever. Not only just in like learning how to do golf, but doing anything, dude. Yeah, I mean, I I went on YouTube to learn how to change a solenoid in yeah in my car, right? 
or like change out a yep. garbage disposal. I mean, it, just the dumbest things where you're just yep. like, how do I do this? Oh, let me YouTube it. There's a guy on, there's people. This is amazing. There's, there's people that their well, entire like, page is just like, this is how you screw a light bulb in. Yeah. It's, encyclo- it's <laughs> an encyclopedia of get. videos yeah. of how to You know, that's what Elon Musk function. said too. He's like, I don't know if I'd ever, I don't think anybody should ever go to college anymore. Was like well, his mantra because he said everything that you were paying to learn, you could go on the internet and learn. Yeah. Anything that you wanted to learn, you want to be an astrophysicist, you could go online and read thousands upon thousands of articles yeah. about astrophysics. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, but it's like kind of true. Like you look, but then you're like, okay, well, what's real and what's not? So yeah. you have to, so pretty soon it turns into a, a reality. I mean, what's reality and what's false? And is that yeah. all mixed together? You know? Yeah. So, so you think you know something that you don't back to Trevor and like that tournament. And He's like a, to he was, listen, year. he is an Irish boy, just like you, a little hot headed Trevor O'Shaughnessy. Okay. He gets a little, he gets a little, you know, just like you do, but he's bigger. So he, he doesn't let it out as much and he's not passive aggressive about it. I mean, but I got a little, look at my beard. It's a little red too. I got a little Irish in me. I get it. <sighs> I just uh, let it go. He the, doesn't know the, you. The, the 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 comments were super, and what he was saying in private is just completely unacceptable. And I ba- pretty much ban him yeah. from anything I'm going to be a part of. So he messaged you directly. Uh, him and like Chris Wilson, and like he was using profanity and like being oh really? really really aggressive. Really. So we'll keep that away from the podcast. But um, yeah, the dude is just out of control. So wow. if he ever wants to play for thousands of dollars, I'll fucking play him anywhere, anytime Yeah, for whatever dollar amount he can scrap up. I didn't know all that. Yeah. So, I mean, just we get serious here. A million well, tricks. You don't I, fuck with us. I mean, I'm not the best. I was definitely not the best in the field that day. Who is the best in that field that day? Well, there was a kid that played. I'm just saying who is the best? Who really is the best? You mm-hmm. never, there's there. Even if you say you're the best, Right, ever? Yeah, you. Who, who is the best? There's always going to be somebody before and after you that are better. You know? Well, I it just, I it depends on the day, right? Yeah. Like, or week, or w- the stretch you're on, or whatever. Like, there was some plus four handicaps in that field. Plus, there was guys that didn't even have a handicap that were, you know, had the one dude that played with Kevin had uh, status on the PGA Latin America tour. Like, yeah. he's good. Right. He hits the ball 380. Like, yeah, he's fucking good. That's a bomb. Okay. But is Highland really a long, is it a, a bomber's well, course? I mean, yeah, because you can just hit it as far as you want. And Pretty there's straight. not a ton of stuff to get into trouble. No. Like, you can drive one. You can, I mean, there's just, yeah. I can't remember if I played Highland. I've played Duan. Yeah. Which is right there. Don't, aren't they connected? They have, like, no. the same owner? No. I thought, Highland is in St. Paul. No, I know. But I thought they had the same owner. I don't know that. It's, I thought they're city, they're munis. They're yeah. city courses. Really? So, no. That's not true. Oh. But anyway. I make up shit. I, uh, I just, I, but we're going to always have some sort of like negative feedback and that's fine. Whatever. It but if you it have is. people talking about what you, what you did in a scramble, you made it. Yeah. I mean, uh, he, he was, made it. He people was, are talking about what you did in a scramble. He made it. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I mean, I. And we look su- at us now. We we're su- wearing turkey hats. Yeah. Well, I surprised myself. So it's not like. It's like unwarranted, but he's never seen me play either. You know, so you've never met him. Never. Mm. No. Do you so, want to? Um, I'll play golf with him. I don't give a shit. Like, yeah. maybe I'll shoot a fucking eighty three that day. I don't know. That's what I told him. I'm like, I. You never know from day to day, from course to course, what you're gonna do. I play so, like, I I started listening to a podcast today that Sam, the owner of uh, Twenty Four Golf, sent me today. Um, I can't even remember the name of the guy. Um, but it's um, decade golf or whatever. Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with that. Yep. But course management stuff and and like I listened to about 45 minutes of the podcast and it basically like resonates exactly how I play golf. Like mm. like tour average from you know let's say 160 and in or 160. It's like 22 feet. Like, right. That's where I want to be all the time, no matter yeah. what course. I never hit at the pins. I never hit at edges of greens. I'm always playing away from short siding. I'm always, you know, yeah. that's how I play golf. And it's honestly changed my scoring. I mean, you could look at my scoring from last year to this year, and it's like 
miles different. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I'm trying super hard to listen to what you're saying, but in my brain, you know what my brain's doing right now? <laughs> Making turkey noises. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. In my brain uh, right now, it's going, how many redheads can we get on a golf course and see it make, like, nothing happen? <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like go incident free the entire <laughs> golf tournament. Just have a redhead only golf tournament. Just a bunch of little, tall, big round. Like that what, Jeremy guy we lost sure. to. Yes. Get them all on the golf course and say, welcome to the Irish Open. Yeah. Good fucking luck. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And every hole would have Guinness at it. And just see if we could go incident free. I'm not even Irish. That's the thing. Yeah, but you look, I don't tell people, shut the fuck up, dude. That's like our brand. You got to be a little leprechaun. Don't tell anybody that. You got to have a little bit. Have you done a 23 and me? What? No. Well, you got to have a little Irish in you. I'm sure some. Do you have a little Irish in you? I have no idea. Let's you want one? Let's go get a little Guinness. Do you want one? No. <laughs> no, I don't. No, listen. <laughs> listen to me. But that when I was when you're trying to talk serious, sometimes my brain goes off in these little things like, oh, that'd be funny as hell, wouldn't it? That would be funny. That could be like ESPN 8, the Ocho, the Irish Open. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just as, as many redheads as you can fit. Oh, oh, we got a fist fight on number four here. I just, you know, I, and then we'll t- quick finish up. So this O'Shaughnessy was just chirping, and I don't know if it was just motivation for me to go out and play the last six rounds of, of the year before we had to shut it down. No. You know, I go to Olympic Hill, shoot minus three. I go to Keller, never seen it since the redo. Played it all the way back with Kane. Shot plus two, which I thought was a remarkable score for because it's long 6,800. So it's, you know, longer for me. Yeah. Um, and then I went to the Nookie Blanky shot four under there. Shot what four was under that? Valley Wood. Stop. What, what was that? Nookie Blanky. What the fuck is that? Southern Hills. <laughs> Nookie Blanky. Yeah. Like it's obviously the easiest course <laughs> on the planet <laughs> or for me, you know, I like, like how you just slid over it. <laughs> like it was in your, that that is in your dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Nookie blanky yeah. that made me stop. Yeah, because I don't know what. <laughs> it's like I could, I could, you could literally square me up, give me the, tell me what hole I'm on, blindfold me, and let me pick my club. And In I'll, fact, I'll f- if you ever say shoot even par, if you ever say Nookie blanky with a straight face <laughs> ever again. <laughs> You're gone. <laughs> you can't just brush over that. Okay, so, so Nookie Blanky. Nookie Blanky, 4 under. Got Valleywood, 4 under. Uh, yeah. I shot another plus 2. Oh, I shot plus 2 at Winsong. Wow. So not only was it was like, so they cut the fescue, so that was like you could find your ball in the fescue, which you can't yeah, in the right. summer. Um, or it thinned out so much. That at least has to be six strokes better than if they cut the fescue. Well, you can find let's, your ball. let's let's minus out the. So I got the pin sheet right. We're on the first hole, and I'm looking at it. And I'm like, what the fuck? These pins are two yards on. It was like uh, superintendent's revenge. Oh, so I was like, oh, my first experience at Winsong, which is an unbelievable golf course, mind you. Yeah, never played it before. Right. You know, and we only played from sixty. Did you give me a ball yards. marker? No, I didn't buy anything. Bastard. I almost bought a head cover, but I was like, mm. I'm starting this apparel company. Like, obviously, I'm going to have head covers made. Right. You know? Yeah. So I was like, I don't need to waste 150 bucks. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so went out there, played. <laughs> I doubled this hole, the second hole. Um, I was barely off the green, hit a great shot in there. And I let the ball break below the hole like literally three inches and it rolled all the way down, down into a landing area. And I put it up, rolled back down, put it up two putt, whatever. Holy fuck. Made a double. Really? <clears throat> Bogeyed the next hole and then played par With golf. every par- hole in the front? Front, right, back, all two paces, three paces. I have a picture. Really? Of the, That's crazy. Of the pin sheet. It was nuts. So I thought two over there was really good. That's pretty good, dude. <laughs> Forward tees, but it was super windy. Yeah. Like, so it's still playing golf. Like you yeah. still have to get the ball in the hole. And so do junior clubs, do they hold up pretty good for you? Yeah. Or? Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Junior clubs. <laughs> Whatever. This is a comedy golf podcast. I got to make yeah. jokes, man. You always want to go back into the seriousness and we're wearing fucking turkey hats. I'm not serious. You're pretty serious no, right now. So, uh, I need you to loosen up. He, uh, he motivated me to just play better. But I've been playing good all year. So, so say, fine. so what, what is it tomorrow? Thanksgiving. I'm saying thank you. I'm thankful for that, that he motivated me to say it to him. But and then this other guy. Say it to him. Say thank you, <laughs> Thanks, Trevor O'Shaughnessy. Trevor, buddy. And then this other dude. 
this Matt dude. He like, oh, he like was chirping. This me same about guy, his buddy Matt. Oh, yeah, whatever. Whatever mm-hmm. was like chirping me about like the courses I was playing. Ah, uh, and I'm like, bro, like, why do you care? What? what why do people care so much? I don't know. About your success. You I, know why? I don't know. Because they want to see you fail. I guess. I don't want to see you fail, though. It just doesn't make sense. And it's like, listen, you po- I'm trying to post positivity. Yeah. And no matter what you post, there's going to be somebody with something negative to say. I know. It's unbelievable. Can't Isn't make crazy? everybody happy. You it's can. like real estate and construction. You can't you make got, everybody but happy. You got to bring out positive vibes mm-hmm. and just be good to yourself. Yep. As long as you're good, that's the only person you got to care about. I know. Who is it? Number one. Me. Yeah, that's it. Well, them, but. Don't care about them. Okay. Just care about yourself. Okay. What time is it? Uh, 1230. We got lots of time. We what time do we start? Uh, 40 minutes. Yeah, probably about that. Well, we started like 1150. <clears throat> got it. Right? What does that say on there? Our Four, new production 40, manager. 40 minutes. 41 minutes we've gone. Yeah. Okay, we got we got a few more time. To yeah. Few more to go. Let's move past the negativity. Let's move into the positivity. I'm glad that you said that you're thankful for that. Great story. I really think we should have an Irish Open. We should. Let's just talk about how to do that. That a little bit. Okay. Get- how many... I feel like there's more redheads per capita in Minnesota than there is in Ireland. <laughs> I've seen so many redheads here. I don't know if it's because it get, like when it gets... Not like red... Okay, let's not say like full-blown redheads... But everybody's got a little red in their beard. Got it. You notice that? Yeah. Why? Aren't Water. we mostly Norwegian? Maybe it's the Maybe it's iron. the iron. Dude, <laughs> that was just genius. That's why we got those water softeners and the salt. They're like, get the fucking red out of your beard. Take yeah. a shower with this. Yeah. And now it's just ingrained in our beards. God, I feel like that would be so much fun, though. Just have a, like an Irish-based No, I we don't tournament. need to do Irish, but we, we should do... What we had planned on doing this. Oh, because they're such an oppressed t- people. Are they such an oppressed people that <laughs> it's just too, it's not <laughs> PC enough? No, I. we need to do our tournaments that we talked about last year that we never did. Well, yeah, because we're in, we're, we're just busy. in the, we're in the testing phase. Yeah. This has been a test so far. Yeah, it's good. We're only in 13 episodes. Yeah. You know, when this gets into the hundreds of episodes, yeah, we'll be, we'll be well tuned up. We just need. But you know what we need? We need people like to comment on our stuff and tell us what to do yeah. better because well, we're for the people. Well, and we, our guest list has diminished, but we always do it spontaneously lately. We yeah. just need a better schedule. But as much as I like to hear myself talk, I could have just done this in the mirror, you know? Yeah. I want to do it for the people because they just have, there's a variety of podcasts out there that are based on, on golf, I think. And a lot of them are like, you know, uh, almost like golf broadcast. Yeah. I would like, shh, could everybody be quiet? Yeah. I would like to listen to the grass grow. Yeah. You know, and well, I want to be like, hey, get in here. I just do this, do that. Let's have fun with it because well, it's fun at the end of the day. We're here to have fun. Yeah. Like, and we're here to get better. The podcast, but we're not going to get that good. That we, lo- you know, could listen to that are, you know, pretty popular in, in the Minnesota golf scene are really directed at, like tournament play and professionals and high-end amateurs. And we're just for like the hacker guys. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm not a hack, but like I, that's, those are my people, you know? I, I think <clears throat> that, yes, I would, I would say that I get along better with hacks Yeah, because the people who aren't hacks take it way too seriously. Yeah. It's just a game. And then they just, I just can't chill with them. That's what it's the biggest the biggest thing I get like here from people, and I think we've probably talked about this, but we're talking about it again, is how many times do you have somebody go, Oh, we don't, you know, they don't want to golf with you. They're afraid they're not going to do good or whatever. People are like, afraid to golf with us. So we talk about golf so much. We talk about that. We're good at it. We like the sport. Yeah. And then it's like, you want to go on a family outing or like have friends that you never played before. And they're like, Oh, you know, I don't know if you want to golf with me. I don't know. I always hear that. I don't know if you want to golf with me. I don't know. if you want. I'm like, yeah, you're, th- I love this. Yeah. I I love golfing with you. Yeah. We're going to take a double max. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But we're going to have a good time. Yeah. And if you ask for help, I like, yeah, I like helping and I don't, I used to probably overstep the helping stuff, you know? Yeah. Now I really don't help unless they ask, but I would say, uh, but you're definitely not that guy that like stands behind somebody who's like, yep. A little bit to the left, a little to the right. Okay. You're good. 
No. You know? No. But it's like, look at how, and every swing is different. You totally. Know? So it's like, don't watch me swing. Don't watch my swing, but watch the tempo of it. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. Tempo of it, where do you start, where do you hit, the, you know, what the main kind of focuses are and stuff like that. Things that, like little tidbits, little things that, well, Keep your mind off of thinking about it too much, yeah. too. And I like doing that. But I like just the overall, because when you play golf enough, yes, you enjoy it, but it becomes like monotonous in a way. Yeah. Where it's like hit the ball, get in the cart. Hit the ball, get in the cart. I walk, so. Or, well, whatever. You need to walk. Hit the ball, walk. You look at my belly one more time on this fucking podcast, I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> I'm taking the turkey hat off and I'm beating you with it. I know it's you, getting big. You said that you needed to lose I do. weight, dude, so you need Shit. to stop getting in a cart. I thought it was going to be get rid of the booze and it just melt off me, but no, you got to work for it when you're 30s now. Imagine being 40. I know. So you better get going. Start you walking, see, You dude. see it when everybody says, imagine when you're like, say something about their age and, and the other person goes, oh, that's my <laughs> oh for you. You're 40. Yeah, well. I do need to walk, and I, you know what? I have a nice click gear too. It's really not that unless you're playing it with big gaps in between holes yeah. or big rolling hills. It's really and it's not really not. That it's bad. the it's the thought of walking, you know. In my mind, I'm going, I don't walk today, but I should because when you're actually out there doing it, you're like, oh, this is fine, easy. It's kind of like. Um, Doing the dishes it or gets, folding laundry. It's the same mindset of doing dishes or folding laundry. In the front end, you're going, I don't want to do this. But when you're doing it, you're like, this is nice. I like folding Or these when you're pants. done, you're like, God, that was nice. God, that was nice. I got, look so at all I'm these done. folded I'm clothes. I'm so glad I did that. And I've gotten past that. I'm the folder in the house yeah. now. So I'm folding laundry now. It makes you play better, first of all. Do you think so? I think so. You can run out of gas a little bit maybe, but that's why. Well, you got to get the stamina. But once you do it. Yeah. Multiple runs. Like I didn't walk last year because of my plantar fasciitis, hmm. and that pissed me off. Like, first of all, I don't gold, mind riding in a car. That was a big word. What cold plantar fasciitis? <laughs> okay, so I'm giving you a gold star. Yeah, well, continue. It sucks. Continue. So I didn't walk last year, and obviously transitioned into more walking this year. I don't mind yeah. riding in a cart, but I would prefer to walk if the course allows. Yeah. Uh, Especially if I'm playing like a competitive round. Can you be my accountability buddy? And make you walk? Like if we golf, be like, hey, like hold remember hands? Your, no, just oh. just be like, remember your click gear. You just, just leave it in your car. That's what I do. It is in my car. Oh. But I don't take it out. <laughs> I mean. I look at it and I go, ah, they have something that's motorized. Like take that. those Twin City golf events, the carts included. Yeah. It's an advantage to walk. Or to ride in something like that because the tire, you know, getting tired and stuff. But yeah. Um, plus, it's, I don't know. When it's cold, I'd rather walk. I just need to walk more in my daily rounds. Yep. You do. Because I, I do. I have, don't think TPC is that bad of a walk. No, there's tons of people that walk. Yeah, it's flat. It's pretty flat. Yeah. And it's pretty like kind of make your way around the course kind of thing. Yeah. The but I, even when I go like golf with you, I feel like just be like, bring your click gear. Yeah, you should. I know. Like, we... Did we walk? No, we did not. I should not. eat better, too, but I like peanut butter rice crispy bars too much. Peanut butter rice crispy bars. Dude, it is bad. You got to quit eating, dude. Quit eating altogether? No, I need to stop. Okay, so, yeah. Those ones you get at holiday. Those big ones? Peanut butter rice crispy bars? That's not even on my radar, bud. Oh, fuck, dude. I'm, then don't try them, because you down, have one in one. I'm down 15 pounds from last fall. Really? And... It's probably well because you got to keep up with your wife. At least ten pounds have come off probably in the last four months. You got to keep up with your wife. Yeah, I mean we do like because she's making she's running the circle around you. Protein shakes or like nutrition shakes, like Herbal Life shakes, a yeah. uh, couple times a day, and we don't do any like of that crap. I mean, there's yeah, I tried to diet. We absolute, we made it two weeks. Like I've got like I don't even think it's not even weeks. it's not don't say diet because it's not temporary. You got it's a lifestyle change. lifestyle change. You know. Um, it's hard because we have, still have some shit food in yeah. the house for the kids. Um, but you just have to like block it out mentally. Like I went and drank beers the other day. We went to the wild game, Trevor and I did. And, uh, I had like four or five beers and let me just tell you, I've felt shit for the th last three days. Cause I had, I hadn't drank in weeks. Yeah. And, uh, 
yeah, had too many beers and it just made me feel like crap. So I feel like food's probably the I same like thing, though. Your max beers, too. No, it's not too. <laughs> it was these freaking. We got this one like 35 ounce can of like a double IPA and 8%. Like, They're doing odd uh, ounces. That is now? not like. They're doing odd ounces now? It was like some big, yeah, weird 35. keg can. It was nice. weird. Yeah. Um, and whatever. So I don't know. I feel like food has the same effect on me. If I eat a bunch of crap yeah. food, it's just going to make me feel like shit. My blood sugar is all fucked Isn't up. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So, But like, it's so fucking good. If it's, I mean, but it's not when you break it down. I know it's, it's not poison. when you break it down, but when you put it in your mouth, like when I put a Taco Bell burrito in my mouth. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> but, but, but when I eat bland chicken and some mushrooms, I feel great. Yeah. My mouth doesn't. Yeah, well, you can get stuff that substitute that stuff, you know. I know, but I feel like eating healthy is like beating off without getting a climax. You know what I mean? <laughs> like if it's okay, <laughs> but you don't get there. You know what I mean? Well, you have to change your mindset. I know. You got to, you, you know. I got to flip it on its edge. You, yeah. I mean, you got to think about your kids. Like a meal prep. You got to think about your kids and be like, okay, I got to change the way I eat because I want to be here an extra 10 years or whatever for them. But that's not given either. What? That's not, you can't control that. Well, I'm just saying, if you are healthier as you age, of course it will make a difference. You think so? Absolutely. My wife works in cardiology. Oh. Of course, heart problems directly and come from. And my uncle's a psychologist. What does that have to do with anything? Exactly. It has nothing to do with anything. Being overweight absolutely 100% stresses your love muscle. That's true. Love muscle? Well, your heart muscle. Oh, love muscle. Like it's that's love not what I went to. Yeah. That's what's wrong yeah. with me. Yeah. That's what's wrong problems. with me. And I think it's, it's deep rooted, uh, child, <sighs> child, uh, abuse. Love muscle. Okay. You know what so I mean? Don't use that. No, I, I get what you're saying now, but that's not where my head went to. And I think okay. it's something I should talk to my therapist with yeah. next month. Why does my brain go to something? So <laughs> back to nutrition and golf, like it makes a big difference Yeah, if you want to walk. And I think you play better and you, you just, you said it at the beginning of the podcast that to, to get better, the I first thing weight. you need to do is lose weight. Well, the only way to get there is it's not even by exercising. It's all stemmed from the kitchen first. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously the exercise comes second. But until you train your brain to not eat sugar and burritos, you know, like, I mean, you're just going to be stuck in that. I know. And I, but it's how hard. many more things can I quit, Jake? Well, you just. I uh, quit booze. I'm off 30 days tobacco free. Oh, well, good. See, you're making 30 progress. days tobacco free. And now you're going to take tacos away from me. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, so nobody said you can't eat tacos. You just have to let's improvise and say, let's make a taco salad. Mm. Right. Or let's get some shells that are carb, you know, balanced or whatever. Like, mm. let's get something that's not 36 grams of carbs. Yeah. And you get ones that are eight. I think getting rid you of know. carbs was is easier than it because I just like bland food, but yeah. I don't know. You just run out of things to make, don't you? Um, you can't have rice. You can't have no. You really can't. No. Yeah. So you're so just, you just make ground beef just and tons of protein. So yeah. like my favorite thing is that we have at the house, and and I it was leftover hamburger from the trip because we bought way too much hamburger for the tacos. So I put it into one pound baggies of cooked ground beef. Mm. So I buy shredded lettuce. You're still eating that? It's frozen. Oh. So I refroze it. Yeah. I, yeah. So I should use it up, but <clears throat> um, six months, it's good. So I just take a third pound of that or whatever, and I put it into a cook it, obviously. And then shredded lettuce, I'll put like dill pickle cut up, little little cheddar cheese, and uh, some Thousand Island dressing, and it's a or light Thousand Thousand Island. It's like a Big Mac, right? Mm. Do that with uh, turkey hamburger or like ground turkey. Same thing. Really it tastes the same. Are you so, are you getting sweaty and itchy as fuck? No. Are you? Yeah. Because <laughs> of the helmet, the hat. Oh, sweet. But I wore it. It was hot in here anyway. I don't even know what day I wore it, but I wore it for like a full day. When it went in the Fleet Farm. Had that and my Vikings poncho. It was on Sunday. Oh, perfect. Or my Vikings poncho. Got and then it. we got obliterated. Yep. 
That was a sad day. Yeah. Well, I don't care. I don't know. No, you say you don't care, but you care when we win. I was like hopped on the bandwagon. I love watching your Facebook, watching the Vikings, because you'll post like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) It's like, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, they're going to fucking lose. And then they win. And then there's a bunch of comments being like, thank you. Dude, Every time they are, you the cannot luckiest. turn them. That was the only game that you could, that you could turn off because you knew it was, they over. were the luckiest. They're the luckiest eight and two team ever on the planet of the, you can't Earth. beat luck. You can beat everything else, but luck. Well, they're going to get beat tomorrow. How dare you say that? Yeah. Okay. Anyways, this the is Patriots, a golf, this is a golf podcast. We're, we're going back to golf and nutrition. It's a sports comedy, nutrition. It's a variety okay. podcast. Let's get real. Let's put you on a f- program here. I listen. The program's only lifestyle. Yeah, I know. I've we've I've listen. Been down this road, and I know it needs to be done. Okay, <sighs> just do it. It's not bad for you. I know it's not. It'll be good. I know. Think clear. Oh, I think pretty clear. You won't be uh, huffing and puffing. You won't be snoring as loud. <sighs> I don't snore loud, do I? Yeah, <laughs> like I said, you won't snore as loud. You think so? I know so. Yeah. You'll have more energy. You'll be able to walk the golf course with your buddy. It'll be great. Who? Me. <laughs> you know, and it's funny, you young guys, like Garrett will not walk. Yeah. He refuses to, but then bitches about how fat he is. I'm like, yeah, man, you're 28, 29 years old. You're kind of fat. Yeah. Like, you need to turn it around. And he will not walk. I'm like, well, there you have it. Like, you just have to. Like, I it's know. part of the thing, right? If you're going to be out there, you might as well make it an exercise. An exercise, right? I feel more guilt by riding on a cart than I do the pain that my feet might feel the next day or whatever. Really? Like, I just, I'm too guilty to, to be gone for that long and then not work out because. That's the decipher or the decision I've made was I'm going to play golf versus go to the gym and work out. Mm. Well, I might as well go get an exercise and walk the course because it's a long ass walk, right? Seven miles average between it? five to seven. I think five it depends on the course. Yeah. yeah. But you know, if I'm going to be gone for three hours, I'm going to walk. Do you know what's going to motivate me to walk? Pokemon go. Pokemon go. Yeah. Cause the more steps you get in, the more eggs you can hatch and shit. Oh my God. No, I'm telling you. I don't know anything about Pokemon. But that's what I'm going to use. How about you work on, like, you're going to play better golf, so you're going to. But I won't. I won't play better golf. That's not what's going to get me to play Dude, better golf. I, when this facility opens, I will, de- when Sam comes on, we'll definitely talk about it. But I know you can drive to Egan because you are very capable of it when you don't have the children, especially in the wintertime when you're not as busy with construction. And we'll get you in there. I want to redo your swing so badly so you can hit bombs and still hit iron straight and wedges. And I just I want to redo it. I mean, it's just like. We're going to redo my swing? I have dreams about and nightmares about your swing sometimes. Why? <laughs> because I want you to get on a better plane. Because it's crazy? Because it's a little too crazy for me. It's fun. And I've worked really hard to make my swing not as crazy. And I really want to, and it's helped. So I want to, with the help of the pros that they're going to have there, because they have two pros that are going to work there. Yeah. I really want to. But how fun is my swing to watch? It's not. It's pretty fun. Yeah, when you hit bombs, but there's too much inconsistency with it. So I would give a lot of my time to help you. Would you? Yeah, I hope you're thankful for that. I am thankful for that. Okay, Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. everyone. Yep. Thanks for uh, hanging out with us at the pod. You have a great holiday weekend. Bye. Bye. Bye.